You'll notice that I'm moving the Titan as close to the door as I can because I want to make sure that the Titan is as close to the treatment area as I can. And all of this excess ducting that I'm creating right now is ducting that is going to be able to go further and further into the treatment area. So now let's go outside and make sure we have the ducting set up properly. Okay, so at first glance, we've got a small problem. Where is the ducting gonna go? Here's my air mover, and here is a piece of furniture that I moved. Well, you never want any piece of furniture too close to where the air ducting is gonna be spilling out hot air. So what we're gonna have to do is just move this piece of furniture a little bit closer to the center of the room, of the living space. And this piece of furniture actually can be just placed anywhere in the room. Don't be afraid to stack mattresses on other mattresses and to tip up sideways coffee tables and to manipulate the furniture so as much surface area is exposed. Don't be afraid. A heat treatment should look like somebody ransacked that room and spread out everything they could. Even material, such as blankets in the room that might have bed, bugs eight, bed bug eggs in it, you don't want that material to be nicely folded and placed somewhere because it's going to be hard for the heat to get into the very center of that material and you're just going to have to heat the room longer. So it's a good idea to open it up, spread it out, and to drape it onto something. Don't be afraid to make a mess. Now, back here, we notice a couple of things. We're going to move our air mover. We're going to unplug it from the plug that it was in and maybe plug it in further down here so the cord isn't touching the ducting, okay? And then let's move this into the room wherever we can. You want to try and make sure that it is not touching any of the side flashing or any of the decorative wood just so that it doesn't end up causing heat damage by being on the wall. So you wanna make sure that the ducting is away from the wall. Okay, so as I said before, I wanna make sure I protect the floor and also I protect all of the doors and the door frames that this uh, duct may be uh, touching. So what I'm going to do is I'll just place this moving blanket right there and we'll provide a thermal barrier uh, between the wall and the moving blanket. I just have to make sure that I try and be as organized as I possibly can and that I dust underneath that area before the heat treatment uh, so in case any bed bugs are in this area, they'll be killed by the dust, if not by the heat, okay? Now, this duct, I'm going to point generally kind of just straight into the room. And this air mover that's right here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move it a little bit deeper into the room so that it's further away from the duct. You never want any air mover within direct proximity to one of the ducts or else you will actually melt the, uh, the air mover. So this ducting, you never want it looking like this. You never want it going straight into an air mover. You always want it to be kind of far away and just having the air come generally into the room. In order to do this, you have to make sure that you regulate the length of the duct. I like using these little metal clips. I simply go like this and I clip it on. So once the air is moving in, it stays right there. Now, this room looks like it's pretty much properly set up. We've got all of the air movers set up. We've got all of the drapes taken care of. We've got everything centered in the middle of the room. The air vortex has been tested and created and the picture frames have been taken off of the wall. So. For lack of a better term, we are ready to rock and roll. Let's show you how to set up the Titan now.
Okay, so the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to plug in the Titan. You just need to take a regular extension cord from somewhere in the house or a nearby 120 volt source and make sure that you plug it in to the side of the Titan. The Titans take up an extremely small amount of electricity compared to the um, electric systems. Then I always just put the cable cuff for that extension cord on the cord so I don't forget it. Then what you're going to do is you're going to open up this little box right here and you're going to take out the thermometer. This thermometer is a thermometer that we mentioned earlier that goes in that small hole in the front of the Titan. So what you're going to do is you're going to close this box back up again. This is just the regular circuit box. You're going to turn on the thermometer and then you're going to take this little probe and stick that probe in this small hole right here at the front of the Titan. Now right now you'll notice that this is just measuring the temperature of the air inside of the Titan. Once we turn this thing on, the temperature will shoot up. In order for that temperature to shoot up, what we have to do is grab our good old channel locks or our pliers and begin setting up the propane tanks. These are our propane tanks. So the very first thing you do is you connect up the Y connector. If you're going to hook up the propane to the Titan, you need to understand a little bit about propane system. Propane systems are not righty tighty lefty loosey like all the other different types of um, screws out there. They're actually the exact opposite. In order to tighten a propane system, you actually screw it in by turning left. Once you make it all the way, to the end, you're just gonna to wanna to do one extra quarter turn or one other small amount of turns with this channel lock system right there. Same goes over here. You're gonna take the other side of this Y connector and connect it to the propane system. And you connect it by turning to the left, not the right. Once you've screwed in, as I said before, you take your channel locks and you make sure that you do one last quarter turn or one eighth turn with the channel locks so everything is secure. Then what you're going to do is take the end of this long propane hose and you're going to connect it with the quick connect system that it has to the end of the propane. Now, this quick connect can't just be put on like this. That's a safety measure. You can't just put the quick connect on. You actually have to hold back on this little mechanism right here, and then push it on like so. It'll be halfway on and then you just snap it in by pushing a little bit harder, okay? So once again, take it like this, curl it back, push it on, snap it on, excellent. Now this system is totally secure and you can begin to open up the propane valves. You open it up like this, open it up like, like, like that you will hear the liquid propane come out. Now, the liquid propane comes out into the Titan through this valve right here. And this valve, like any other system, is lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. Now for now, since we don't want propane just pouring into the system, okay, what we're going to have to do is leave it closed. But when it is time to start, we're going to turn this to the left and turn the Titan system on. Speaking of which, just to show you how that's done, let's give it one quick little test run. I always store my channel locks next to the propane tank, so in case I need them, I can get to them quite easily. Now, before we start the actual system running for real, we have to make sure we dust the system, but I always like giving it one quick shot up, one quick uh, boost up as a test run before I turn it on for real. So I'm going to turn on the gas just a little bit, okay? And then I'm going to engage one of these three settings. When the toggle switch is on off, nothing's happening. When it's on fan, the fan is just blowing air from the turbine 
throughout the system. When it's on fan, it's just the turbine engaged blowing air. When I press fire, you're going to hear a couple of sparks and the propane that is now coming out of here live is going to start on fire and create heat. You know the system's working when the temperature of the propane system starts to spike. Now, once you've reached about 180 degrees, you want to dial it back. Sometimes you have to play around with this nozzle a little bit so you don't overheat the system. to do is I try and have it coming out of the end of the Titan at about 160 degrees if I'm only using one duct. And the reason why I do that if I'm using only one duct is because you lose about 20 uh, degrees for every 20 feet of ducting that you use. So right now this says it's coming out at 162 degrees. Let's go inside and see how hot it is actually at the end of the duct. So now we're gonna come in and we're gonna see what the duct look like, looks like. And we notice a couple of things. First off, with the pressure of the air coming through it, it's no longer touching this side of the wall, but touching that side of the wall. So I'm going to move my protective moving blanket. Also, I'm going to measure with my infrared gun, okay, the temperature of the air coming out of the end of the duct. You'll notice this gun measures the temperature of any object that the laser dot points on. So right now, the wall is at 76.2 degrees, 74.4, it's mid 70s. You'll notice my hand is around, I don't know, mid 90s, looks like I'm a healthy human being. And this duct right here, and here you'll notice that the air is coming out of the duct at around 118, 119 degrees. That's not even lethal temperature. So this tells us we're losing so much heat energy through the duct system that we actually have to go and turn up the heat. So let's go and let's turn up that heat valve right now. So if we're only getting 119 degrees out of 163 degree um, Titan setting, we know we're losing what looks like to be about over 40 some odd degrees. So we're gonna have to raise that temperature. If we want it to be about 140 uh, in the room, we're gonna have to raise that temperature another 30 degrees. So let's open up this valve until the machine starts spinning out around 190, maybe 195. Once again, if you go a little bit over, just dial it back. Sometimes the system has to gain a little bit of equilibrium to be at the right degree. This is not a super exact science when you're dealing with heat, but that's perfect. Let's just say it's at 194 degrees. So here, you can see we're at about 192, 191 degrees. Let's check out what it is inside. So now I'm gonna come in, and with my heat gun, I'm going to measure how hot this duct is. Now, as you can see, it's coming out at about 130 degrees. 130 degrees is good, but if I want to get the target room temperature up to about 140 degrees, I have to make sure that maybe the ambient energized air is at 150. Uh, sometimes in some cool scenarios where there's a lot of heat sinks, 160. So I really need the air coming out of here to be at around 160. So let's go back and turn up the heater even higher. So now I'm going to crank this up a little bit more even, probably another 20 degrees. 